start. Tim. Hello again. Welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is BGFH back for another iOS app. And we started by sh I started by showing you guys the Read to Go app from Bookshare. And I want to continue the reading topic this time, but this time I want to show you a mainstream app that is accessible. And the one we're going to look at today is Nook. I'll Nook. switch to it here. Starts. Nook. And this was one of the first, uh, one of the, it was the first of the major two ebook stores that actually became accessible on iOS iBooks has been accessible for quite some time, and I will cover that here in the near future as well. The one downside to iBooks is that you are limited to being on an Apple platform. So if you decide to switch over to Android, you want to read it on your PC or something else, you are kind of out of luck. That said, I have used... Um, before some of these other apps were available, if there was a book I really wanted to read, I did use iBooks. Anyway, <clears throat> Nook, I believe it was late, mid to late last year, they released an update that made their app accessible with VoiceOver. And unlike the read to go app, the, both the Nook app and Kindle use VoiceOver as their speech. So they just tie right into that and make their app work with Apple's built-in accessibility. So, we'll start at the top here. Settings button. We have a settings button and we can just change a lot of little different things like, you know, our account information, uh, get help and support and version numbers and a couple other odds and ends in there. There's not actually too much in, in the settings area um, in this app. Search button. I can search my library. All items filter. Button. I can filter my items by title, by author, by um, download date, that kind of thing, just like, just like I could in Read to Go. The one thing that I will say right up front is that no, you cannot search for and download apps from the Barnes & Noble Nook website. Instead, um, you have to go to the website on your computer or I suppose you could use Safari on your phone if you wanted to, but you have to do it through the web, search for your book, buy it, and then once it's purchased and in your library, <clears throat> you can log in with your free Nook account with this app, and then it will be available for you to read. The reason that is, and it's not just Nook, it's Nook, it's Kindle, it's Audible, it's a lot of different things, not just books. Um, music is the same way, movies, anything like that. The reason that these apps can't do that anymore is because Apple, one of their frustrating policies is that if you are going to sell anything as an app or an app developer, you have to basically provide a 30% cut to Apple. So every sale they make, Oh, gee, they lose 30% right up to Apple. So they said, okay, well, we're not having any of that. We are just going to take that feature out of our app. You'll have to go to our website and go through that minor inconvenience. But no, we're not going to give up all that profit for just for Apple. Um, <clears throat> so unfortunately, that's just the way a lot of these work. I think their way, like the reason Bookshare took so long to get their app out too is because they were fighting that. They said, we're, we're a service serving people with disabilities. We're not selling anything, so you're not going to get a profit anyway. It's basically just like a library that you have to have special proof to get in there anyway, so, you know, you're not going to get anything. And finally they won, and we do have the ability to search in that app. But, um, like I said, you can filter your library by your author, your title, whatever. Um, then you have your books. Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. Button. Open so th book. that is a Steve sample. Book details. Surprised it didn't say sample this time. Last time I touched it, it did. Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. Button. Hmm. I don't know why it Open did book. say. Okay. Games TM 11 slash 22 slash 12 by Imagine Public. So that is a magazine that is not accessible. I did try a couple of different magazines to see if they worked. And the National Geographic one... Magazine sample by National Geographic Society. Right button. there, that one is... Open 
very accessible. That one, so if you do want to read that, um, you can. What I would recommend if you're looking at a magazine through either the Kindle or the, um, the Nook app is I would highly recommend getting a sample of it, if at all possible, before making the plunge for a purchase or a subscription because it may not read. It may or may not read with voiceover. Usually regular leisure reading books, you're fine. Um, the two problem areas that I've seen are magazines and textbooks. Um, and that is not necessarily Amazon's fault or Barnes & Noble's fault. It is usually the publisher and the people making the books. Um, but that's a whole other topic that maybe I'll do a blog post or a, some other video on because I that would take far too much time here to devote to that. So... Beyond the Bear, How I Learned to Live and Love Again After Being Blinded by a Bear, by Dan Bigley. That's another book that you may recognize if you read the Illegally Cited blog in the past. Um, really good book. I highly recommended it if uh, that sounds interesting to you. And now you can read it on a variety of different services, but at the time I grabbed it via the Nook app. Let's pop into there, actually. Beyond. Opening ebook. Ellipsis. Book page. Two finger swipe to read continuously. So, okay, so it lands us on the front cover image, and it did tell us, because it noticed that we were using voiceover, it said, hey, swipe down with two fingers for continuous reading. I could do that, or, because I'm on the t title page and I know there's a bunch of crap I want to skip, I can touch somewhere in the middle of the screen, and then I can three-finger swipe to the left. One of 252. Beyond the bear, how I learned to live and love again. Center Keep flicking. Guilford, Connecticut, center of screen. Copyright, copyright, sign to the... So I can flick um, page by page that way. On the bottom, I do have a page slider where if I land on that, I can just swipe up and down and go by page numbers. Or let me go up to the top left of the screen where we have some navigation buttons we can use. Back to library button. Top left, I've got my back to library. Pretty, pretty obvious uh, what it does. Contents, bookmarks, and notes. Contents, bookmarks, and notes. So it is just what it sounds like. I can add a bookmark and go to it later. Um, if the book has a good um, markup, you can jump through your table of contents. Text options button. Text options. This is where I can change my font size, my foreground, background color, that kind of thing. Brightness button. Brightness, self-explanatory. Search. Button. Search. Nice thing is I'm able to search for a book, or search within a book, I should say. Sorry about that. Information. Button. Information. I can get more information on the book. Three of 252. Three of 252, so that is kind of my little slider there. Now, I will say occasionally when I've played with this app, for whatever reason, if I flick to or tap on an object, every once in a while, I will have a problem where voiceover will kind of stop responding to gestures and I just leave the app and come back or turn voiceover off and on again and it'll work fine. I don't know why it happens but for me sometimes it does happen. Let's pop back up to the left to here library, and I'll go to Book contents. So here table of contents. Page they combine selected contents tab button. So near the top of the screen I have a contents tab. Bookmarks tab. But annotations tab. Button. Annotations, you can put those in there if you like. Front cover, page one, title page, page two, selected, copyright. Page so that's three. what we're on right now, copyright. Contents, Pick prologue, it's terrible. So it's let's horrible. say, page five. prologue, book double page. tap, and boom, two I'm there. To read continuously. Prologue, it's terrible, just horrible, the beeper on doctor. James Common S. Bedside table went off brutally early that midsummer morning in 2003, jolting him from sleep like an elbow to the skull. His head sprang off his pillow. His eyes shot open, then narrowed. So it kind of just started reading the first sentence, but if I did a two-finger swipe down, I could just continuously read with voiceover. Um, it doesn't have a separate voice built into the app, so I cannot use it like I can with Read to Go, where I can just, you know, hit a play button, lock the screen, and then just, you know, walk away and read. You do have to have the, um, phone act or device active um, but really it's 
for the most part, not a big deal. A little bit tricky if you're traveling because you don't. If you put it in a pocket, it's easy to bump the screen. But if you are just reading somewhere, it's not too bad. Um, and it's really just that easy. I mean, you can just use your standard voiceover gestures. I can. Morning in two thousand three, jolting him. I can you know tap somewhere on the screen with voiceover. I can use my rotor gestures, my swipes, all the things that you've played around with, like in the mail and Safari and all those things. That'll work um, in this app. And it works very well. And because it's using voiceover, you also get the benefit of being able to read with a Braille display. Because voiceover is processing that, you're also going to get Braille support. So um, that is just, like I said, a quick That's overview right. of... Back to library. The button. Nook app. Settings. And button. I, like I said, with all these apps, I'm not going to go into every single feature. Um, what I really am trying to do is give you some basis for getting started and show you that this, you know, these apps do work well with voiceover. Point out any glitches or instances where there are some problems because in some apps, you know, the majority of the app will work great, but there'll be a certain little point that'll give me trouble, um, that kind of thing. But I do want to show you guys some of the apps that I would definitely use and that I would recommend. And like I said, on the phone, I use reading apps all the time. I'm reading books. I'm reading eh, a few magazines here and there. I read you know, news feeds, I read all kinds of different stuff. So I figured this would be a great place to start is, you know, a lot of people like to read. So um, covered a couple of uh, ebook apps for you and I've got a few, couple more to go. So with that, uh, that has been a, just a quick look at the Nook app available for free in the App Store. Just remember that you cannot search for books and down... Um, search for books and buy them in the app you do have to go to the website but once you have them purchased you sign in and there you go they will be available so that is a quick look at the nook app hope you guys enjoyed it until next time i will talk to you guys soon